When you started to make films, what were your hopes for these films? Where were you, what were your hopes for where it was going to take you? Were these just to tell a story or you actually wanted to, to have this be something that you made money from? When I first started, I think I got a little roped into what everyone, you know, at first maybe gets roped into, at least that I've seen through the years, is that you want to, you know, get some level of acclaim. You want to get some maybe money out of it. Um, you know, of course, you'd love to pay all your bills with your films, wouldn't we all? And, uh, you know, it's, th it's that kind of thing. And, and I think a lot of that at first makes sense. It's, you know, of course, you'd want to make a living off of this. Um, but very quickly after making some films, I realized that wasn't going to happen quite as quick as I wanted. And I think a lot of times people get burned out. I've seen a number of filmmakers who I respect and uh, people who I've worked with in the past who who make a good first film and then you don't hear from them again and they kind of subtly fade away. And a lot of time it's it's really not through a fault of their own, but it's just more through seeing behind the curtain, if you will, and kind of saying, oh, OK, this is not going to be a thing that just happens overnight. It's going to be a thing that happens over many years and it's going to be a thing that I'm going to really have to plug away at time and time again. And, you know, it, it's not a quick it's not a quick trip. You know, it's a very slow road trip a lot of times. And it's got a lot of stops and a lot of different things you have to do along the way. Um, and I think it's it's almost more of a lifestyle sometimes than it is a, a quick thing to fame or anything like that. Um, but I think now I've settled into a much better place, certainly a much healthier place uh, for longevity, which is understanding that I can and will make films wherever I find myself. And I know I have the means to do it. Um, the, the circumstances and little variables, you know, do I have a big crew, which I've had in the past? Do I have a small crew, which I've done as well? Do I have no crew? Is it just me? You know, it, it's all those little factors. Um, they always are going to change and those are going to be, you know, your little Tetris puzzles you're solving along the way. But I think it, it's knowing that you can pick up the the video game, if you will, and play it. Uh, you know, you're always going to have the, the challenges in game, but it's being able to say, no, I can always play. You can always do it wherever you are, because I think a lot of times uh, people do get discouraged and they say, oh, I can't do this. It's too hard. I'm not going to be able to figure out those little challenges. Um, there's too many variables and roadblocks, but I think it's understanding that, you know, hey, we, we live in 2020. As, as crazy as the world is, one of the nice things is that the world allows you to go on the internet and buy a camera and a mic and a light kit uh, cheaper than it's ever been. And it doesn't mean that it's going to be easy to make a film, but just getting the equipment, uh, that was the, the biggest gate that the gatekeepers had over all of us in the past was that you know, hey, that equipment, that's more money than you're ever going to see. That's more money than you're ever going to be able to, you know, drop it once on a purchase. So that's going to lock 99% of people out. And now the, the gate's open. So you can at least get through the first gate. Now realizing, okay, there's more gates along the way. And that's what happens in film is kind of realizing, okay, well, how are you going to pull people together? How are you going to pitch projects? But but I think just understanding that you can get through that first gate that for years and years and years, so many people couldn't even, you know, really get through. Um, it, it's, it's pretty empowering. And so I think it's as empowering as you'll allow it to be. And I think it's the type of thing where if you understand kind of what's ahead of you and you can take it at a pace that makes sense to you because that's who it has to make sense to at the end of the day, then I think you'll be OK. What are your thoughts on people burning out after their first or second feature or even a short because they went into debt to yeah. finance that film? Yeah, I've, I've seen a lot of folks spend uh, enormous amounts of money on their first film, you know, even short films. Um, I have always tried to be very frugal just in life. I've always tried to, you know, make sure I don't spend more than I have, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I was just raised that way. That's how my parents raised me. And, and I've always tried to carry a bit of that over to film. Um, I think there's like a glamorization of, oh, I'm going to, you know, hey, put it all on credit cards and put the house on it and whatever, and we'll see what happens. And and that's not really glamorous. Like to me, I, I think that there's like a little bit of a sadness there because, you know, we shouldn't have to do that. We shouldn't have to, you know, bet it all in order to make something happen because, 
you know, what, what are the results? If, if you do make it happen, great, but maybe nobody sees it, you know? So it's not even just making the film itself. It's, you know, will people watch it? Will people find it? Will people resonate with it? So I always say, you know, try to assess your risk. Certainly you'll have to spend some money on a film, but I always advocate to spend, you know, the, the smaller amount that makes sense, you know, make sure that you can feed your cast and crew, make sure you can clear your locations, make sure you've got the gear you need, um, make sure you're not rushing because, you know, if you're rushing, it doesn't matter that you spend all this money to get in that beautiful, you know, house or location you needed, you're, you're probably not going to shoot it the way you wanted to. So it's a lot of times just being able to check those basic necessity boxes, but I think also just designing your films to not need as much. Like that's one of the things I've always tried to do with my filmmaking, whether it's, you know, my first film, Son of Clowns, it was about a circus and that was the first thing. Okay, well, how do you write a film about a circus with $2,000? Uh, well, you have to change the circus. So the circus soon became a rinky dink family backyard circus that was falling apart and that became part of the story. So then I've just kind of said, okay, I can relax a little bit. The circus is allowed to look bad, you know, and, and it's kind of part of the plot. Um, so it's just sort of engineering things in ways that uh, I think are cost effective and allow you to still be creative, but just maybe in a different way than you intended. Have you ever talked anyone out of putting things on a credit card or discouraged someone? Um, I try not to be discouraging just in general, you know, if, if someone really wants to do it, um, I'm probably not going to be the one to stop them, you know, if their mind is made up. But, you know, I do tell like younger filmmakers I meet at festivals and just other filmmakers as well. Just, you know, if you have something you want to make, just just try to do the like diet version of it just to see if you can do it, you know, just as a proof of concept, because, you know, if you make it and that diet version of your film is is great then you can go for a full Coke, you know, you can get the full Coca-Cola later and maybe convince, you know, someone to pay for it. But, you know, why try and do that yourself? Uh, you know, that's always a question you have to gauge. And I think some people um, feel that they have a message that they have to get across and that no one else is going to do it for them and no one else is going to finance it for them. And a lot of times they're right. And, and that's why I, you know, recommend you know, make your own films, but but don't go into debt doing it. Because I think if you only can make one film, then that's not a career. You know, you've, you've almost shot yourself in the foot too early. So I think it's almost just about playing the long game and being able to say, okay, I made one film and I'm going to learn from it. And I'm going to, you know, go through the festival circuit, figure out which festivals to go to, which festivals not to go to, you know, what to do with promotion. And then eventually you just kind of have to let it go and then hope that you learned enough and saved enough, uh, worked hard enough to make another one. And I think it's kind of through that um, consistent output over many years that I think you'll build a career, um, you know, from yourself and from your own, you know, wallet, if you will, essentially. And, and I think that's more interesting to me, certainly, than kind of betting it all on one kind of big action sci-fi film because I think the world's got a lot of those already. <laughs>